Okay. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Welcome everybody. Glad to have you. I'm starting to share my screen. We're going to do our usual thing of signing in to start and then um, taking a couple of minutes as we're waiting. You can just start reading the competencies we'll be covering for today. So welcome. I'm glad to have you. I plan to start in just a couple more minutes. Make sure everybody has time to get in. Hope you guys are doing well today. Feel free to jump in if you have any questions before we Good morning. We'll start in just a couple of minutes. Thanks for joining. Okay. Hope you guys are doing okay today. We'll start in a minute. If you have any questions, anything you want to ask about before we start, if not, skimming through those um, competencies we're looking at for today, competencies nine and 10. About two more minutes. So for right now, I do not have this available to share with you. I want to share it with you first before um, before I make it available and you'll see in a little bit. I just want us to go through some of these questions together before you have all the um, before you start looking at it, but we'll look at it in just a minute, but you will have access as we finish up today. One more minute, maybe everybody's here that's getting here. Um, Dr. Rodriguez, um, well, how can we view recorded sessions from previous um, So in our, in our Canvas, you're able, to, you're, you're a part of the Canvas class, right? I think your name. And yes, so you, you go to the modules and in the modules, there's a link to all of the sessions. And when you click on them, the recorded session is on the, on the PowerPoint or, or the Google session, uh, put them all together there. And, and mo everything is available right now, except for you, today's session. I don't have the nine and 10 module available yet. Like I said, I want us to look at that together. So welcome everybody. I do think I'll go ahead and start. Might have a few more joining. There we go. Okay, so just make sure you've signed in your first and last name and that you've started to look over our competencies for today, but you, you see what um, our plans are as far as how we're going to be, what, what we're going to be focusing on. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. You know, like those of you that have been attending pretty much every week, you know the pattern we've got going looking through the, um, with the review and the way that we're starting to practice each of these competencies. So we'll just get going in our usual routine. I'm welcoming you again this morning. Thank you for joining. We have a nice little group. I'm very happy to see that. Um, here's a couple of our little motivational little um, things to get us started. I feel like we're getting so close. So right now we're just at that point of saying, I think I can, I think I can. And, I know that you guys were getting to that finish line as far as covering all the competencies in our test prep sessions and also, um, you know, getting closer to the end of the semester and pushing through to get there. 
So, and then I like that next one, keep going because you didn't come this far only to come this far. So we're gonna keep going and keep on working to accomplish the goals that we set way at the beginning and to do what we have to do to successfully, you know, pass these exams. That's what we're here for. So again, thanks for joining and just jump on track with our plans for today, looking over our um, competency nine and 10. Like I said, I've gotten, I have the resources ready, but it's not, I haven't shared this session with you yet because we'll be looking at this together. In a few minutes, I'll make it available so you're able to access it. But this, stay on track looking at everything together before you start um, looking through some of the things a little bit later today. So like I said, in our same routine, we want to look back and see where we've gone and where we are going. When it comes to covering these competencies, we've worked through um, basically two competencies a session. And like we've discussed, if you don't have, if you weren't in the live session, the recorded sessions are available for you to access. And if you, uh, they, they're available in the Canvas modules, but if you have questions, we can talk about that afterwards. Um, and also in the Google Drive resources where everything is posted. So um, everybody should be pretty, pretty much, you know, in the routine of how the science of teaching reading is set up, how it is very much aligned with our ELAR um, exams that you're doing, whether it's for EC through six or four through eight. So we have steadily worked through the different components that make up a reader and writer. And we are now officially in domain three reading development and comprehension. And so today's session will focus on vocabulary development and comprehension development. And what we see is the last of pieces in this, um, in this domain are, will just be a more in-depth look at comprehension. And so the next time we're together, we'll, we're going to continue looking at comprehension but now get a little more in depth thinking about the different genres and how comprehension looks different depending on the types of books that are being read. But for today, we're looking at that foundational information of vocabulary development and just basic general comprehension development before the specific work we'll do with the different genres. And so what we see here is that this portion, this domain, will pick up 22 questions, 24% of your exam. So a good amount will be covered here, but um, you see the big is what we've been covering over the last several weeks. So as review, we keep on seeing are the hot air balloon sample illustration to help us remember how we've been working through how everything that we're doing fits together how there's basically a pattern for the way that we're building on each of these competencies for the way that they've constructed and built the exam and how we're looking at, you know, what we're doing is put taking piece by piece of the development of the literacy skills needed for fluent readers and writers. So this week, here we are looking at the vocabulary piece and the comprehension piece. So very much having worked through all of these different areas and whether or not you feel confident in each of these areas, you have a lot of resources to delve into to study them more. But our last few competencies will be on our vocabulary piece today and the last three all about the comprehension piece. It makes sense, there's three um, comp competencies that cover comprehension because that's where everything comes together. All the skills that we've learned come together into, do you understand what you're reading when you're picking up a book? Can you compose a, a piece of writing independently? It's all about comprehension. So everything that we're doing in each of these areas is leading our students to be fluent, comprehend, comprehend um, <laughs> readers that are able to comprehend what they're reading and writing. So any questions or comments before I go on? You guys seeing how that is working together? 
You want to jump? Yes. Thank you for the information. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yes, and again, just a reminder, I'm trying to provide these resources and giving you a step into them, but as we remember, you know, there's a lot that I'm adding into those folders, and it really does add and supplement to everything that we talk about here together. It's just we can't go through it all. So when we're thinking about vocabulary, guys, it's not just the letters and sounds anymore. Now it's about the construction of words and all the different ways that we work with words and have to understand words in order to get comprehension when we're reading. And so all of our earlier work has been around understanding the sounds and the pieces of words and the letters, the sounds, the letters, and how the words work and build together. But now we're thinking about, now we understand all those pieces and now we have, now we're focusing on the word development beginning with sight words, all the way to how to get more complex vocabulary with understanding how words work and how it works together in comprehend in reading and writing texts. Okay. So our focus for today is our, you know, and hopefully you had a chance to look into this. The same thing as always, what does the competency statement say? This guides us on what we need to study and further guidance, of course, the descriptive statements. So again, now we're looking at these concepts, principles and best practices related to vocabulary development. And we need to understand the and show knowledge of the assessment and instructional practices that show the development of this um, skill throughout the different grade levels. Of course, with um, the STR piece, we're really focusing on the grade level, the primary grade levels. And then in your EC through six, the focus is more on the upper grade level. So I jumped over to this one to show you that there's the exact same competency in our EC through six exam, but that, that would be more focused on the upper grades. And then the same thing in four through eight, the exact same thing looking at grades four through eight. So it's really giving us this idea of understanding the development from early childhood through grade eight in each of these areas and we'll have it covered across each of the exams that you're taking. So again, we're glad about that. There is um, overlap. What we're doing here helps you in the other areas as well. Um, so, this, um, so now the second one we're looking at today, comprehension development, competency 10. Again, the highlighting development, understanding the development of reading comprehension assessment and instructional practices to promote the development, different strategies, all about to help us clarify and gain understanding of uh, appropriately complex text. So now guys, and again, you have access to all of these. This is what's in your binder. Your, your own independent work should involve looking at all of the descriptive statements and doing that highlighting we keep talking about that gives you all the vocabulary and in-depth um, details of what's expected. But what I wanna ask about, let's put this in the chat. The next slide covers this. What are the patterns that you're starting to see or that I hope that you're seeing as we're attending these sessions together or studying on your own? What are the things that they're asking you to know about for each competency area, for each literacy skill? What are the big areas that you need to understand for, you know, in, that's covered? It's like a pattern that I hope you're seeing emerging. If you, uh, if you can kind of break up what, the way that you might uh, categorize your study, what would it be? So put that in the chat. Can you think of some major areas as you look at the highlighting things each week that we start out with? What things are they asking you to know for each literacy skill? Hopefully that makes sense. What are the general areas that you should know if we said, here's what you should delve into? And I'll give you just a minute. You can just put it in the chat. Okay, thank you. I see some contribution there. 
Yes, you're getting it. You keep hearing some say the same language coming out as far as what we're expected to know and understand for each literacy area. Now, you remember our very first competencies were about the foundations and understanding just the development. But after that, it broke into looking at each literacy skill and they are just like you're, I'm so glad that you're seeing the things that you're jot jotting down here. I'm hearing from a few of you. There's a pattern guys. And now if I, if I had my binder, it might be to start getting more dividers or the little post-its in between to start thinking about, okay, for each of the, the component, the competencies covering the literacy skill, I need to know what it is, all the components of it, you know, thinking about those visuals, the oral language tree thing that I created, like what are all the pieces of that competency? And then there's always the descriptive statements within the competency that's asking you what might stand in the way of students developing in this area. So what are the factors affecting the development in oral language or in phonemic awareness? And often it has to do with environmental factors, cultural factors, opportunities, things like that. So, and then just like some of you pointed out, how do we assess it? What are a variety of ways you assess this area? How does that assessment look different at different grade levels? And then it becomes, can you um, interpret the assessments, not just how to take them, but what do I do with that information? How do I analyze those assessments to then tell me how to teach it? And that's our final step there, how to teach it, the stages of teaching it, um, going from the development of it, like we're saying from early childhood, the emergent stages, all the way through what does it look like for students at the fluent level or independent level of whatever the area is. And so that's how we think about those stages. And we have all those visuals now and our resources that, to, that tell us here's what they're expected to do at each of the stages and the strategies that you incorporate depending at what level they are. And then it becomes, um, now we have these varied strategies for how to teach it at different stages, but what about the instruction for your diverse learners at those different stages? And so the differentiated instruction is your other piece that keeps coming out. And so to me, this is, um, you know, just this in-depth study of preparing for all of these sessions and just pulling things in and out and all together. That's, that's the, you know, I think that we've all come together to start seeing, yeah, there's a, a good pattern that's emerged here and a good way of really pulling these areas apart and helping us to, to divide up this information and categorize it and see again a further analysis of what, um, what, what areas you need to focus on within the competencies. Maybe you're good at the assessment piece, but you need to talk more about what are the components. Yes, what's your question? I see a raised hand, thank you. Can you refresh my memory, um, the breakdown of what differentiated instruction is? Oh, sure. So that's when, you know, we're thinking about how are we accommodating for different learners. So we have a whole class instruction activity, but of course we have to think about our students that are English language learners. And so now that change that shifts the way that we will modify that lesson for that student. Um, we have to think about our struggling students as well as our exceptional students. Okay, okay so, so can that can that be conducted like if I'm doing a whole group session? Yeah, I, you know, so your whole group session, it's always, um, sometimes I use the analogy, if you do the same lesson for the whole class, I call it the three bears effect. It's gonna be too hard for some, too easy for others, and just right for a few. So okay. that, it's like, I can introduce something into a whole class, but I better understand that in order to target each groups of my students, I need to do some uh, differentiated type instruction to follow that whole class instruction. So that mean, that said, I would pull those students who need the additional help and go over the lesson again. Is that is that what that means? 
that would be one of your strategies and that's where your strategies come in that's understanding what would be this different strategies to use depending on what we're teaching okay so yeah one-on-one -on -one instruction intervention is a strategy um, thinking about how you're grouping them the peer interaction small groups i see some of you contributing here that's awesome if you have your own ideas okay so yeah, that that's the that's the trick is that we find different ways of working with our diverse learners, and it is always different, so that we figure out what's the best way to reach what they need and hit that target. Okay, thank you. I needed that that brush up because I was with my um, observations uh, this week. That was one of the things that was noted noted on my um, you know how to think about differentiated instruction okay good yes that's a big you know key term that's going to be expected for you to be addressing like, okay we need to make sure that all of our students and within those diverse learners we remember the ones that are um you know exceptional as well so when we're really hitting uh, the different instruction we're addressing how are we going to make it more challenging for the ones that you know it's too for and how are we going to make it less um, manageable for those that are struggling and okay. lowering our expectations in terms of meeting the objective it's just we just have to take different paths to get there okay thank you okay okay guys i see some nice contributions i'll take a minute to look at that here in a second but um I, this is the great conversation that you want to think about or you know just talk about with each other or with me as you're studying it's really what do these things mean and understanding that and what it looks like in the classroom is everything that you need to pull together when it comes to you know being ready for this test also anything else any other comments yes all of those things thinking about the diverse learners it's it, yeah and how it's going to apply to your uh, ESL, your dyslexia students, your struggling students, all of that. Thank you guys. Okay, so now a quick little video again, giving us an idea of what does this look like in the classroom when we're talking about vocabulary development. So again, depending on the grade level, it's going to look different. But at this grade level, it's very much just at, you know, vocabulary, strengthening vocabulary through read alouds, the strategy that you'll observe here. Let me I think I need to make sure I'm sharing my sound real quick. Yes. Do that so everybody can hear. Okay. So this one's a short one. The next Dan reading activity Dan is read aloud. Dan like shared reading, read. read aloud involves the entire group. The key point is that it allows every child to learn and to experience a range of vocabulary, phrases, and concepts from literature. And it allows them to listen to language and how it is being used. In this session, the children are encouraged to listen and to learn about book concepts, story structures, the use of words as literary language, and specialized vocabulary. Notice how Teresa uses this story of one drop of water and a million more to engage children in exploring the expressive quality of language. Where rain comes from? Yeah, I know. Nathan, you know where rain comes from? Rain soaks up in the cloud. Um, water soaks up in the clouds, and then when the clouds get so full, they water down. Ah, and what happens when it falls to the earth? Where where does the rain go? In the ground. Caroline? It goes under the ground, and then it tries um, up again, vibrates in the air, and then goes back into the clouds. One drop of water and a million more fell from a cloud into the forest. They dripped from the branches dropping and plopping to trickle down the mountain sides. That's the rainforest. Yeah. Oh. One drop of water and a million more filled the mountain streams. Down the mountain they ran, splashing and dashing over stones and through rocky channels. One drop of water and a million more slid into the river. Down the river they flowed, 
gushing and rushing between banks and under bridges. Floods. Floods. Teresa selects a page from the story and guides the children to explore the expressive quality of the author's language for communicating a message. The water is moving differently on this page. Ricky, close your eyes and listen. Because the water is not moving the same way on this page. Down the river they flowed, gushing and rushing between banks and under bridges. Show me with your hands again how you're moving on this. Okay, I'll stop there, but that's again, you know, just a touch of that example you know, resource that gives an example of what this, what strategy looks like when it comes to strengthening vocabulary or developing vocabulary. So within that little clip, you heard a couple of key, you know, vocabulary terms, um, the, the purpose of what the teacher is doing with giving them the complex vocabulary that they're going to be encountering in the book, and a strategy of visualizing so a few different things just within that couple of minutes. So that's how you really examine the videos that I you know, have up available of what am I seeing and how does this align with what I'm expected to understand here. The next reading activity. Okay, so a, a good little example there that you can go back to. So now, you know, I just have the visuals available before you start practicing some practice questions. And so we want to think again, just like we looked at, we have to understand what are the stages of each of these areas and how to develop the areas. And so clearly you would expect the early stages to be in the earlier grades and working through the later stages to the upper grades. When it comes to word development, it's more about the more complex word development and the ways that students study words to understand how to get to more complex words within what they're reading and writing. A piece of what you're expected to know, if you look through the descriptive statements, you see this key term of how that you're expected to understand how to develop word consciousness students. And so that's a vocabulary term that you might be adding to your glossary. And so here is again, a nice visual of what would be strategies that I would be expected to understand how to do when it came to this um, developing word co uh, consciousness, when it came to that objective. And so then this um, visual helps us to do a further study. Do I know what each of these strategies are? And if not, then look further in to get more information. So again, you know, this, these visuals are just like a step for you to recognize, okay, is this helpful for me or does it require further study for me to fully understand it? Any comments about what you've seen so far? Okay, guys. Very informational, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, guys, so another, um, Thing And this, this is one of the questions I remember we had maybe last week in our practice questions that refer to the three tiers of vocabulary. And somebody said, yes, if it's a three tier word, that means it's that um, the academic language that are, that's the most challenging vocabulary for students that they might not have as much context around as opposed to the tier one words that are more common. And so just remembering that practice question from last week that was actually, I think, under reading fluency competency, it helps us to know, you know, each of these competencies do overlap and what we know for one, we need to apply in other areas when it comes to the way that we interpret the test questions and understand them and that helps us to get to the correct answers. So then we get into the comprehension development. And as you look through the descriptive statements for those, some of the things that you need to understand are what I hope are basic things that are familiar for you. I'm not going to assume they are, but hopefully you have some good connections to a lot of the things that, are, um, that you see under the descriptive statements for comprehension, such as understanding the different genres 
because that might be some of the things that are asked within the scenario questions and understanding the different genres and how you use them to, um, to then lead students to write and comprehend the text is different. You wouldn't do, use the same strategies for fiction books as you do for nonfiction books. So you have to have those connections of knowing what those different genres are. Yes, Jamie, question, hand up. Well, it's not a question, but I just wanted to contribute real quick. Uh, yesterday I did my first walkthrough and it was over literary elements and stuff. I made a little poster and I can send it to y'all. It talks about the different literary elements and it's broken down into uh, character setting and plot and events. So. That would be awesome. That's exactly <laughs> the thing. Share, please share, please share. Yes, I think everybody's saying yes, please. Any visuals to add? And actually, that's what I'm starting to do with um, some of our classwork. I'm going to be pulling that into our resource folders as I'm asking in class to do more visuals because what you guys come up with is often better than what I find on my own. And that's exactly the type of thing I'm looking for our literary ele elements. I was looking for some visuals with that too. So thank you so much. And that's the kind of peer support that I hope that you're giving one another. I really appreciate that. And um, I think, yes, back on Canvas, I started uh, just a disc on discussion board, just an open place where you guys can throw out a chat question or exchange information. I see some of you talking about a study group. That can be a place for you to upload resources for one another and just say, here's something cool I saw and it's just a picture or a link. That's the way that we're helping one another too. So that's a great example there. Um, a piece of what you need to know for comprehension are the different levels of how we expect our students to comprehend. And so you'll see questions referring to the literal, literal level, the most basic level of just what color was the dress that you read about to the where they have to infer what's happening in the story to the uh, top level of where they have to evaluate, analyze, or critically reflect on what's happening. So, um, and again, understanding how that looks at the different levels is important because you wouldn't expect them to evaluate at a high level in the early grades even though you still have some expectation of it. It's not as in depth as it would be at the upper grades. So you're also expected to know how to develop your students to be critical thinkers. Remember leading to the independence that we're all, that is the ultimate goal within each area. It's leading, it's giving them questions and activities that guide them to have to bring in their own perspective and understanding and contribute critically. What, it, what do I understand beyond what is in the text? And so these types of um, question stems are what we're looking to see in your activities that you're planning and in the things that students are doing within these areas, especially when it comes to comprehension. You're asking them to do these things around text because that's how they then can get a more in-depth understanding of what's being read and how they can form their own opinions and begin to get their own perspectives um, from the text that they're reading. So this is another, um, you know, little visual for comprehension strategies. I think what Jamie said she would share is probably a lot better than this, but yes, just anything that you all have to use as a resource so that when you're looking at your questions, when you're planning your activities, you have things to pull from to help you strengthen that and to help you further understand how to teach it. And most importantly, for your students to understand how to, how to, understand, how to get it, to comprehend. This is a piece if we're thinking about fiction, a helpful tool. But again, like I said, we'd have to understand what, how does it look different from nonfiction genre and fantasy and all of those different areas. So that's why understanding those genres is important. Okay, now I, I, that's what I was trying to get to as our time to get to our time to work on our practice questions. You know, what I'm gonna do guys is have you get into I'm gonna break you into breakout rooms and let you start working on these practice questions. 
And if you choose to work independently, you might do that in your group. I, I, was, I was thinking we would just do it independently, but we have a good little number here and maybe some of you wanna to work together. But as you get into your breakout groups, you might say, let's just work you know, on our own for a few minutes and so then we'll start discussing. And I'm just going to send out a message and check on you guys here in about 30 minutes to give ourselves the last 30 minutes of going over the questions, even though, um, you um, and, and do our best to be, have time to review them. So any questions before I break you guys up? And if you give me just a second, I'll give I'll um, send out these in the chat box, your questions. In fact, I can do that now. Um, that's what I'm gonna do, send out the test, the, these practice questions for you to review. And once you get over into to your small groups, I will, um, I'll make the other available for you, the session available for you, so you can access those also. Dr. Rodriguez, this is Adelaide. Did you see my message I sent you? Not yet. No, I didn't. If you want to ask me now or I'll look at it once. Um, I don't mind seeing it in front of everybody. Um, I'm about to take the BTLPT exam, practice exam, because uh, I need to do it ASAP for Dr. Sosa. Um, so I'll finish the rest of your session in the recorded session, okay? Using the recorded okay. session. Okay, yes, it is recorded session. And so, okay. yeah, if you choose to, what I'll do is break you guys. Okay, thank you, Adelaide, for letting me know. Okay. Good luck. See you soon. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Um, I see some of you saying independently. So what I'll do is just break you into breakouts. If you choose not to jo join, then I'll um, close the door, you know, the, the room and make it where they're the ones that wanna be in it. I'll see that you've joined up. If you don't, then don't join and just um, turn off your camera or whatever, and I'll just send out an announcement when we're ready to come back together. So that will be my plan for, for those of you that are telling me you wanna work independently. So I'm gonna go ahead and send it out for those of you that might wanna to work together in a group of about, um, let's see, yeah, two or three, three, well, no, I want it to be a little bit less. Okay, here we go. And so, like I said, if you don't want to go, then don't go and I'll move everybody over so that they, the ones that do are joined up will have participants. And so here comes the invites. So do we just hit, do we join the breakout room and say nothing or don't go at all? Don't go at all if you don't want to work with a small group. If you do, then join it, and that way I can see who is joining together, and I'll um, and I'll switch you around into a room together so that everybody, the rooms that are there, have participants. So don't move if you don't want to work in a group. <laughs> That's the bottom line. So the questions are all going to be on the screen. Hi everybody, sorry if you weren't quite finished up. We're gonna, I just wanna make sure we have time to at least get the answers and hear back from one another if you have questions. So I'm sorry to shut the rooms down. So any questions before I move forward? So right now you should just have your answers together and I'll go through them in just a minute. Right now, I'm going back to our slides, which you now have access to. I want to point out a few things, and we're going to get over to those answers, and I'll have time for questions before we finish up today. So whether or not you were able to finish all the questions, um, some of those were the, I mean, many of those were those um, scenario type questions. And so, of course, there's more reading involved. So maybe you didn't have a chance to get through them all, but you know that's obviously available for you to access afterwards if needed to. So as I look through my, before we look at the answers, I just wanna show you a couple of things. I'm always putting the reminder for you. I hope by now you've taken the practice test at the link and submitted your score report. I have a few up there. But really that's helpful, again, for a couple of reasons. We're getting that pre-assessment, um, you know, how are you doing before you really do a, a lot of in-depth study, which at this point we've done quite a bit. 
but then uh, you you know of course that will we'll see your improvement afterwards too so if you haven't done that yet hopefully you can take some time to do that um, over on our canvas for today and also in our google folder i have the attendance um, you know same attendance as always for this week make sure you submit that especially if you're on canvas and still in classes because we're getting you know you get extra credit even if it's for the recorded session um, and then, and then, you know, of course you have the study resource. I went through and just filled in a couple of things, you know, just to give you an idea of what you should be thinking about on these couple of uh, competencies. But you would, again, this is up to you to continue filling in, looking through and using this as a resource that you're putting in your binders. Um, to do a more in-depth study of where you are and what you need to keep on working on for each competency. So for each session, I hope that you've seen each time I'm adding on the links that we're using for the for that week, including the ones that we used previously. So whether you're accessing this through Canvas or through Google, each time that you get the session, um, the Google Drive sessions, you have the links to get you over to where the resources are. Um, so that will get you there, but I also wanna make sure that you're aware over on Canvas, you know that you should have access to your modules where you're seeing all the, um, you know, all of the resources for each competency. So some, I, I had somebody ask earlier, where do I see the recorded sessions? And so after each session, what I do is go in. And so this is what you see, but it's don't, don't let it, don't make, um, let it make you think that it's not working because you actually have to click right there and that will take you over to the folder. So even though it has that little sad face, you can still get over here. And so that takes you guys into the folder where the competency resources are, but it also within each of those competency folders, that's where you will find the PowerPoint, the Google Drive session that we did, as well as the recorded session. And so it, it, just, it really looks just like the same as the Google Drive session, but see to once you present it, you're able to access the link to the recorded session. And so that's what you that's where you find those recorded sessions for those of you that were asking. And so for today's work, you are able to access and all, and the same thing off of Canvas. If you go to modules, for right now it's just our Google Drive session for uh, nine and ten. But afterwards, I will include the recorded session there as well, so that both that that link will be on on here. Okay, and then within the, um, like I said, within the PowerPoint, within the Google Drive, you have access to the link that takes you over to the folder. So there's a lot of different ways to get you there to where you find all of our resources. So here is our competency nine and 10 resource. You see that I have several things already uploaded including for most of the competencies, you'll see that there's just a Google Doc in there where I include a lot of links to different articles or websites, um, videos, Kahoot games. And so you see, you'll see one of these Google Docs in each that just says resource list, but there's a lot included there and I keep on adding to it. So make sure you're accessing those so it's worth my time to be adding all of that in. And then some nice quizzes from different resources that align with this competency for comprehension and vocabulary development. You see the practice quizzes as well as the answers. Um, and then there's the attendance sheet in there. If you're only attending through Google um, for those graduates that don't have access to Canvas, then you email this to me. So I know that you're um, interacting and participating with the sessions. So then our last thing guys is that one of the things in that folder here are the practice questions that you used 
and all of the answers there, they're highlighted or um, bolded. So now you can do a double check. Number one is C. I'm going back through now to review your answers. One is C, two is B, two A is B, two B is C, and then two C is B. That's kind of confusing, but you see that you have that link to get you to these. And then number three is D. And I'm just gonna give the answers and then just sit back and take questions. Number four is C, number five is B. Number six is D. Number seven is B. Number eight is D. Number nine is D. And number 10 is B. And number 11 is C. Number 12 is A. So like I said, you might or might not have had time to get through those, but go ahead, jump in with questions now. Uh, Ms. Rogers, I'm sorry, I might have missed this one, uh, Dr. Rogers. Um, were the answers going to be in the link you said, so I could pull this up later and see it? Yes, in our competency nine and 10 folder, you have the practice questions so that with just like what you just accessed, and then yes, here's the question answers. Okay, awesome, thank you. Okay, so that's what we were just looking at there. So yes, these are posted. And then, like I said, in each folder, a couple more practice quizzes with the answers included. Of course, you wanna try them on your own before you look at the answers. Can you real quick just repeat the two A, B, and C ones real quick? Okay, let's go back to that. I didn't. Um, two A was B. Two B is C. And two C is B. Thank you. Okay, so. What questions do you guys, we've got a few minutes here as we wrap up. This is what I have for you today. Again, please complete your attendance sheet. Make sure that you know, you're accessing those resources on the folder. You're asking me if, you're, if you have questions. Um, if you're a current student and you're not currently a part of the Canvas course, then send me your UNT Dallas email in the in the chat privately and I'll, you'll see an invitation as soon as we finish up. Everybody should be a part of that by now. And if you're not, it's just because I didn't get your name when you registered for some reason. So yeah, that's a way as a student for you to access everything that we have. Dr. Rodriguez, can you explain question three, why the answer is B? Sure, let me look at my papers here so I can see what that question was. Number three, so not looking at those A, B, and C's. So that was the one. Okay, so the teacher wants to reinforce the lesson while promoting the teacher the student's knowledge of independent word learning strategies. The teacher could best address both these goals by showing the students how. And so the goals are promoting students' knowledge of independent, so you want them to be independent, and reinforcing the lesson that was described above. Okay, so that went along with the with the scenario, I guess. And so the answer is using the print and or digital resources to search for more synonyms and antonyms of a target word. So that makes sense to me because um, you, the, you're wanting the student to do it independently. So you want them to have resources of how they can achieve that without getting further assistance. Um, I'm trying to look through your other options and, and see what what would what did you think it was and why why would you um, did you choose that one?
Does that make sense as to why it's D? I mean, as I'm looking at my other choices, it really, uh, the, it, again, understanding that term and see it etymological dictionary, that's when you're really doing the study of the word root and its history, its um, origin. That's what that term means. And so something like that isn't really addressing the goal of award learning strategy, helping them to independently learn how to um, get to to learn new words. That's what she's trying to do, get them to learn word learning strategies. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's because um, the group that I was in, we thought it was a applied contextual analysis to yeah, determine the meaning. Also, to determine because, the well, the way that we saw D was like, well, they won't be able to use like resources, like if they were to be testing and everything like that. Like, how would they learn the strategy on how to do it independently without any resources? So that's why we had came up with the answer choice A. And that does make sense. You know, a lot of times it does get down to those two, but I think the main thing is a word learning strategy. Um, it might, you might not have the option of the connected text. You know, it's really about how can I learn about this word without having it um, with some context around it. And that's just studying a little more closely as to what the teacher was trying to do. Independent word learning strategies. And so that might just be learning how to learn about new words outside of connected text. Oh, okay, I see, I see. A little, you know, a little close reading into that might be how we can interpret that to get that D, that D response. Okay, so that's a good question and it always is that analysis and it a lot of times does come down to those two like we found out guys so um, Really talking through and I love the idea of you all meeting together as a small group and just doing the You know, looking at the folders and just going to the Kahoot games and doing those together or talking through um, Some of the different things that you're seeing in your observations or in class the activities and how all of those things connect. I think just having conversations around these th these competencies makes a big difference, you know, just really sharing with one another about what's easier and harder and what you're working on to help you. Other questions, guys, as we wrap up for today. Thank you again for your work, your participation today. I hope you're finding it helpful. Do submit your attendance forms with feedback for me. Um, so next Friday, we're not having a meeting. The Friday after that um, is the same day as your other Elevate sessions. I believe they're on that 18th and 19th, that Thursday and Friday, if I'm thinking correctly. So that's two weeks from today. We'll have a session on that Friday and our very last session will be on the Saturday, the 20th from nine to 10. So I think Dr. Player sent out all that information. But guys, you see at the very beginning, many of you, of course, were in class together, but if not, you, you know, my emails at the, on the very first slide of every session, um, the Google slides, you can always get in touch with me and um, make sure that, you know, you're getting answers to any questions as you're studying or able to access things and find what you need. So I'm wrapping up and thank you again, guys. I'll stick around for any questions. Otherwise, have a great weekend and I hope to see you in two weeks when we finish up. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, have a good weekend. Who's right here? I was gonna ask them and see if you happen to know. Um, have they said anything about when they